Oh, hi. Um, I had a feeling you might show up. Look, I'm just going out to get my hair cut. Um, you probably notice it's getting more and more messy as these videos are going on. Um, I was actually expecting you this time though, so I've set something up for you just to keep you occupied. I've got a game of, uh, of Smash Brothers ready for you, so I'll just go. Um, you guys can amuse yourselves here while I'm gone and I'll, I'll meet you when I get back. Hope you had fun with that. I think you'll agree it's quite an improvement. Um, I'd just like to start out today's video um, by addressing a big error I made in the last video. It's probably the first game-changing error that I've actually made. I'm not particularly happy about it, but um, you'll remember in the last video, uh, Lothario searched for her traps and uh, when, when she moved into the room with, uh, with Elros with the two orcs, um, and of course she shouldn't have been able to do that. Um, if there's any enemies in the area where you're searching, you're not allowed to search. So uh, there's not a lot I can do about that now. I'm just going to have to give them uh, that pit trap as a, as a bit of a benefit, a, I mean a bonus. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, not much I can do. I'd like to uh, thank Dan Sun uh, 1981 for pointing that out. Um, thank you. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll move on uh, now with turn six. I've got a feeling there's going to be some blood flying in this turn. Uh, and we'll see how we go. Here's how things were at the end of turn 5. Uh, as we remember the Dwarf and the Elf are uh, being attacked by an Orc at the present moment. Uh, the Barbarian is still confounded by not finding any traps uh, in the room with the statue of the Gargoyle. And the Wizard has the choice as to whether to move on by himself or head back and help out the, uh, the Barbarian. So we'll crack right on with turn 6 and of course as usual we'll start off with Elrois. Elros ended his last turn being attacked and wounded by the, uh, the orc that's now standing next to him. So uh, just to return the favour, he's going to turn around and try and smack the orc upside the head. Uh, we'll see how he goes with that. Elros attacks with two combat dice, so we'll roll and see how he fares. And he's managed to roll a skull, so he's landed a hit uh, on the orc. Uh, now the orc gets a chance to defend itself. Orcs defend with two dice, so we'll roll, and hopefully we can get a black shield for the orc. And, well, the other dice is a, uh, is a white shield, but that doesn't matter because it's landed, uh, sorry, it's rolled a black shield, so it's managed to defend that one hit. So the orc lives on to fight another day. Elros uh, doesn't really have anything else to do. Uh, what he probably will do, though, is move uh, to the north of the orc, just so Lothario's got a clear path to the orc to, uh, to attack in her turn, so he's going to do that now. Lothario is going to step up and swing her axe, so she'll do that now and have a go at the orc as well. The dwarf also attacks with two combat dice, so we'll see how, uh, how see she fares. And she's also landed a skull, so she's hit the, uh, hit the orc as well. Let's see if this orc can stand up to two batterings in, in one turn. And this orc will not be put down resolutely defended there. So uh, that ends the turn for the Elf and the Dwarf. Not a particularly successful turn for either of them, but uh, uh, well, nonetheless, uh, we'll move on with Wilhelm. As we remember, Wilhelm's already thoroughly searched this room and has found no traces of any traps, uh, so he's decided to damn the consequences and run to the south, open the door, fling himself at any enemies that may be on the other side of the door. So he'll move down there now, open the door and have a look. And opening the door, what should he see but three skeletons, all wielding scythes. And one of them uh, sort of turns its head, the other actually has to pick up its skull because it's fallen off, sits it back on its neck. Uh, they all look towards him with open, empty eye sockets, but uh, he can definitely see malice and uh, violent in, violence in their intent. Uh, he's going to step forward into the room now, move to engage that front uh, skeleton. But as he does so, the, first, the very first tile that he steps on when he moves into the room is a pit trap. So unfortunately for Wilhelm, he falls into a hole in the ground, he loses one body point, 
and loses all the remainder of his move. He'll be able to move normally on his next turn. Now, when he's fallen into a pit, uh, he can uh, he can still attack and defend as normal. He's not going to actually get to attack from where he is here because he's not uh, in uh, an adjacent space to an enemy. He is diagonally adjacent to that uh, skeleton, but he can't attack diagonally with his current weapon. Um, and he suffers a one dive penalty to his defense. So, uh, hopefully, uh, for his sake, <laughs> he, uh, he doesn't get too badly beaten up this turn. Also, quite horrifyingly, uh, as the pit trap falls away under his, uh, his foot, he hears a click, uh, and uh, behind him he hears uh, the grating of stone on stone, and uh, definitely a, uh, a deep breathing. And, uh, and a low rumbling growl. So let's see what happens uh, when the uh, evil wizard has his turn, shall we? Uh, I guess now we will move on with the wizard. Now admittedly the wizard wasn't to know what was going to happen to the barbarian uh, in this turn, so he's actually going to move through the secret door into the corridor on the other side. If he sees an enemy, he's actually going to cast a sleep spell on it, um, otherwise he's going to search for secret doors and traps, so he's going to move through there now. And he sees that to the north there is a blockage in the passage, and to the south there is yet another skeleton. So he uh, again starts to chant, waves his arms around a little bit, uh, and begins to cast the sleep spell. This spell will put one monster or player to sleep. He may try to defend himself by rolling one die per mind point. If he rolls a shield, he is unaffected. Once asleep, he may not defend if attacked. He will awake if he rolls a six at the start of his turn, or if he is attacked. Now, skeletons, not renowned for their strong will, um, actually don't have any mind points. So, the spell is automatically uh, goes into effect, and the skeleton falls into a deep sleep. That is the conclusion of Barabel's turn. Oh dear, oh dear, now it is time for the evil wizard's turn. Cackling maniacal laughter. Alright, so I'll start off with the orc, uh, with, up with the elf and the, uh, and the dwarf and we'll see how they fare up there, and then I'll move on to the gang up on uh, Wilhelm down the bottom. So we'll start with the Orc. Alright, as we remember, uh, Orcs attack with three combat dice, so this Orc is going to have a swing at the, uh, the Dwarf. See how it goes now. And somehow the Orc has not managed to land a single hit. So, uh, well, well, while it's good on defense, not so good on dishing out the hurt. All right, now we'll move on to the Wilhelm show. All right, so I'll get all of my, uh, my lovely characters' movement out of the way first. So all the uh, skeletons are going to move up, surround the hole that he's standing in, and have a swing. And the magically animated statue of a gargoyle, which is actually a gargoyle, is now going to move down and attack him from behind. Alright, so I'll roll for the skeleton's attacks first, um, because I know we're all so very keen to see the gargoyle attack. So we'll get the skeletons out of the way. Each skeleton attacks with two dice, so we'll start with uh, the one on the right hand side. That's one skull for that hit, so that's one uh, skeleton that he's going to have to defend against, one hit. We'll move on to the one uh, in the south. That's another single hit that he's going to have to defend. We'll move on to the one on the left-hand side. Now, you can't actually see that from there, but that's actually two skulls. So, uh, that's two single hits and a double hit that he's going to have to defend. And, now the gargoyle will have a chance to attack. Now, I don't want it to seem like I'm cheating, so I'm just showing you a picture of this card. Gargoyles attack with four dice. So we will see how uh, the Barbarian fares against uh, this onslaught. And that's three skulls. So, we've got two single hits. We've got one hit with two skulls, and we've got a three skull hit. So, now Wilhelm is going to have to defend against each one separately. Now, ordinarily, a Barbarian defends with two dice, but, unfortunately for this Barbarian, he is standing in a pit trap, which means his defense dice are reduced by one. So, we'll try a roll against the first hit. That is his defended, one white dot, one white shield. 
the second single hit. Also defended, that is another single white shield. So, the first two single hits he's managed to defend. Now uh, comes the nasty damage. Uh, the next skeleton managed to hit him with two skulls. So he can hope to defend one of these hits. Won't be able to defend both of them. We'll see how he goes. So that <coughs> hit is not defended, so he takes two hit points of damage there. And now the gargoyle's massive hit. Uh, hopefully he can knock some damage off this. But he does not manage to. So unfortunately for the barbarian, five points of body damage dealt to him in this turn. Alright, so that's more than halved Wilhelm's uh, health in one turn. He's now down to three body points remaining. I don't want to be fatalistic, but uh, all help that Wilhelm might have been able to get from Barabel, Barabel is more than one turn away from being able to get into that room. So here's hoping that Barabel can, uh, act, uh, that ba Wilhelm can actually dish some damage in the next turn, maybe take out that gargoyle or one of the uh, skeletons that would really be in his best interest. All right, well, we've got to move on now to, uh, to Barabel and hope, uh, I'm hoping that I can uh, get rid of this sleep effect on this skeleton. So at the start of the skeleton's turn, it has to roll a single six-sided dice uh, and try and get a six. And would you look at that. So the sleep effect lasts for this turn only. Uh, the skeleton will be able to move on its next turn. And that brings us to an end uh, of another turn, end of turn six. I know you can probably hear the glee in my voice, that was a very good turn for me. Uh, but as I said, uh, we'll see what uh, Wilhelm can pull out of the bag. Uh, I, I, I don't like killing players, but uh, and when I say players I of course mean characters, not players themselves. Um, but yeah, I, I, I don't hold out much hope for our barbarian friend. Um, anyway, uh, I guess I'll leave it here. Thank you very much again for watching. Uh, Tortuga, my name's Tinny, and I'll see you again next time.